We are marking International Women's Day this week and so our studio is full of young college women to talk about what matters to them. And our special guest in studio is Union Minister for Women and Child Development, Menika Gandhi, who may not give too many interviews but has never been afraid to speak her mind, whether it is her initiatives in the ministry or things she truly cares about. In the past year, she's hit headlines for recognizing that online threats to women are as good as physical violence, starting a separate cell and app to tackle that. She's also started a campaign for equality of the male and female child and against doctors conducting C-sections. Menika Gandhi, thank you very much for coming here and speaking to all of us. A lot of college girls here, some of them also from your college too. I just wanted to start off by asking you, do you think they, as young women, face some of the same issues that you did when you were starting out? Oh, absolutely. The issues never change. It's just our response to them changes. You know, maybe 30 years ago, there wouldn't have been such a strong zero tolerance for rape, for molestation. Now there is. So the issues will always remain the same. It's just that you and I will change in our attitudes towards them. Now, in all the spheres that men are, except perhaps in not being, we're not quick off the mark to declare war. You know, somebody asked me the other day about how many women are in the army. It was a foreign minister. And I said, um, <laughs> they're there, but they're mainly in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So he sort of looked very, and said, uh, but why aren't they there on the front lines? I said, because they didn't declare the wars, why should they suffer? The people who declare the wars, let them go and be on the front lines. Women, if you leave them to design something, will design a way around a violence so that you can achieve the same thing without necessarily killing anybody in the process. So really, I see no reason. I mean... But <laughs> yeah. on that debate, actually, that has also been a huge debate about women being in combat, women being in the front lines. No, if they want to be, certainly. But I see no reason for them, for me, insisting that their equality in, goes to an area of violence. I'd much rather make them equal in office or their salaries equal. That's where I'd like to go. Rather equal than pay saying, no, they have to stand in Ladakh and get killed before they're equal. That's an interesting take on that. Yeah. Uh, hello, ma'am. Um, I'm talking upon the rape and the sexual assault issue. Uh, there have been numerous cases where women have reached out to the police, filed an FIR, everything has been done. But the rapists still have got bail and they're out in two days, like like just with a click. And then, then it's like they go for acid attacks or stalking or even murders in ex extreme cases. So what is that and where is it that our law is lacking that we're not able to stop such cases and we're not able to, you know, after taking help of the law and the police, we're not able to punish the rapists. Yeah. I know that's, um, I think bail is given far too easily in most cases because we have caught the same criminal 90 times uh, smuggling uh, camels for slaughter and each time the same man the same truck 90 times have got bail now the word bail in itself means a promise that you will not repeat the offense how can you get bail the 90th time mm -hmm. so I, I quite understand this annoyance bail now is given less and less in terms of rape or suspected rape uh, but even for the woman to get to the um, police station requires a huge act of courage. Hello ma'am, this is Gunjan from Deen Dalapadhyay College. My question is that uh, the well-educated authorities of universities, they have formulated the rules which themselves are gender biased. For example, non which to be not served in girls' hostels or, uh, you know... I'm quite happy with that. Quite yeah. <laughs> I'm what is known as a proselytizing vegetarian. And ma'am, uh, <laughs> like women are not allowed to move out of the college after six to go to the library itself. And the reason being the security issues and you know they are immature. I don't think immaturity and going to the library are related. Whereas why are we talking about the security of girls? Are boys totally secured? How can they move out of the college uh, after 6 p.m.? So what are your viewpoints on it and uh, should it be changed or not? I actually don't have a viewpoint on this. You know, ministers are expected to produce views within two seconds, and the views are usually not thought out. But ma'am, isn't I think there a problem for your with gender safety, parity? Let me just look at it two ways. Hmm. As a parent who's sending a daughter uh, to a college or a son, 
I would expect her and him to be protected. And perhaps one of the protections is against themselves. You know, when you're 16 you're also, or 17, you're also hormonally very challenged. So to protect you from your own hormonal outbursts, perhaps a certain protection, a Lakshman Rekha, is drawn. Now you can make this six, you can make it seven, you can make it eight. That depends on college to college. But it really is for your own, you know, safety point that it's given. It's not simply against rapists or against something else. It could also be against traffic accidents. It could be against something else. You know, um, if you choose to live within the campus, then there are certain disciplines that every campus follows. And it's not just in India. It's all over the world, Vita. But ma'am, so, it's especially unfair to the girls, ma'am. That's why the whole Pinjra Tod movement mm -hmm. has been about... Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Because, I'm saying it shouldn't just be girls. Because why should the women suffer? Because the men are I'm saying predatory. The same, I'm saying the same deadlines should be put for the boys' hostel as well as the girls. Right. Because they're both there as a Lakshman Rekha for you to keep you safe inside. That's all. Also, ma'am, this issue could be uh, solved by improving the security, not by, you know, caging them inside no, the hostels. No, it, it can't be solved by putting two Bihari gentlemen on the gate with dandas. Mm, it can't be solved like that. It has to be solved literally by giving time limits for everything. But men and uh, women uh, both, equal. you're saying? No, equal. 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 Okay. Why yeah, should a boys be allowed exactly. to wander about the campus after 6 o'clock in the yes. evening? Yes. No, let them also stay in <laughs> and let them do their work. Okay, what's your question? Or the point is, you have two nights a week in which you're allowed to go to the library and they get two nights a week in which they're allowed mm -hmm. to go to the library. Yeah. Something like that? Yes. If, of course, your purpose is to go to the library. <laughs> <laughs> what's your question? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm very happy that you're not given non-veg. Left to me, I'd make but all colleges and all schools veg. I want to just clarify on that. There are girls' colleges who don't get non-veg, but boys, boys' hostels get. What is the reason for that? Who knows? Okay, what's your question? Ma'am, uh, in context of marital rape in India, when and under what circumstances do you think it will be criminalized, if at all? It's already criminalized, Peter. It's already a criminal offence for a man to rape his wife. But the, it can only become an offence if somebody complains. Nobody in India has ever complained unless the marriage has already broken down. See, tomorrow your husband does something to you, God forbid. You then have to take a call in the morning whether you want to make this into such a large issue that your marriage finishes or whether you want to bear it. Each thing is untenable. I mean, each thing is awful an awful choice to make. But you have to make the choice for yourself. Now what happens is, the wife, if the marriage is still continuing, and she decides to continue the marriage, she will never complain. At which point, how can I come into your bedroom as a policeman and say, right, this happened? And it's not just in India. Literally, there are no complaints of marital rape anywhere in the world where they have even stricter uh, criminalization of it. But, but my, because I think the only people who do complain are people who've, say, been living apart for six months. And suddenly the husband lands up drunk at your house and does something. Then, yes, you will complain. And that's not marital uh, rape. That is just rape. Ma'am, I think what she was referring to was that when UPA brought in the CRPC amendments after December uh, no, there is 2012, it, they refused to criminalize it. It was no, the previous it is criminalized. government. It is criminalized. 